I wasn't too unlike yourselves prior to my incarceration, as, as you know from having heard about my background and my bio, that uh, I was a professional musician, and then I moved to California. Matter of fact, I knew literally just about nothing about prison, <clears throat> other than what I had heard in movies and in books and on TV, you get all these stereotypes. In fact, I recall when I was living in Los Angeles, I once ran into a gentleman at a business meeting. During the break, we went to the water cooler and somebody said to me about one of the guys at the meeting, said, you know, Rick has done time. And I went, what do you mean? <laughs> and all those stereotypes and connotations ran through my mind. You know, I thought, oh God, he must be very violent, you know covered in tattoos, he might jump on me. So I couldn't have been un more unprepared. So we're going to touch on a number of different issues. We're going to do the environment, a little bit about the reality of what it's like. The stream of individuals that continue to go into the system. And then you guys can share some thoughts with me, and I'm going to plant some seeds of thought with you about what possibly could be done. So we're talking about the prison environment. And what I think can best describe what it was like is it's a society within a society. You have your free society outside. And in your society, you have standards. You have a normal, right-thinking kind of functioning. The way you greet one another when you see each other. You have a monetary system. Well, in the prison, there's a whole society within a society too. Only the standards are substandard, extremely below what a normal existing standard would be. For example, for money, you use cigarettes, three packs for a haircut. For greetings, well, people say MF about every three words. It's like a common part of the language. One thing that used to really get to me was on Christmas morning. They'd come out and say, Merry MF and Christmas. <laughs> Christmassy, huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Don't do that at home. I'm going to turn to you right now and uh, ask for somebody to give me a, share your thought with me about what you think I mean by the term, the phrase, society within a society. Okay, I see a hand back there. Right. Did you all hear her? Basically, that, uh, yeah, it's, it's a similar type of pattern, but with its own rules, with its own standard. And in prison, it's a substandard. Over so here we have this... Uh, way of living. I can tell you that when they first brought me through those gates and I saw these fences like 15 feet high with barbed wire and the guards up in the tower and I just imagined, I said, wow, this is so serious. These people like got rifles, you know, just make a move, they're going to kill you. And then when I came into the prison population, I made the mistake of going into prison with a gold chain on. Woo! <laughs> Everywhere I went in prison, somebody wanted to buy it, beg, borrow, or steal it, one of, you know, one of those. So finally, I sold it to somebody for like five packs, and then immediately the people that didn't get it were angry. So I picked up on this vibe right away, that hostility rules and aggression. So aggressive that I want to make an analogy have you ever studied in nature how a wolf pack functions? You have the dominant wolf that will control the pack, and if any subordinates challenge them, the dominant wolf will grab the other by the neck, and if you roll over and submit, the wolf, wolf rolls over and submits, then it's okay. If you don't submit, then you're going to have a fight until dominance is established. Well, when an inmate moves into a new housing unit, 
which can be anywhere from 15 to 50, 60 people, men. Right away, there's this issue of where is this person going to fit in, and they got to try them. It's called try them, try them. We got to test them. We got to see, as they say in prison, if he has any heart. For me personally, the way I dealt with that type of issue was I knew from the time I came in that you know it might come to fighting for survival, and a lot of, and it did. There was a lot of violence. There was. I, a couple times I, I got beat up myself. I got my teeth knocked out. But the issue was, you got to make a stand. If you don't make a stand, they'll mow you down. They'll take everything you got in this society, within a society where dominance is established. So sharing with you just a few thoughts about the vibe for the feel. And my heart started to go out to these people, and I started thinking... Maybe they're right when they make this accusation about maybe there's some kind of grand scheme to keep a certain group of people incarcerated around here. You know, we've got millions and billions of dollars to build prisons, the industrial prison complex, to hook up with corporations that can continue to make billions of dollars off of the people in prison. And what I began to wonder and what I began to speak out on in prison was I don't understand why they don't have the money to spend billions of dollars on community centers for the kids when they're like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen, where they could go. I'm not talking about throw a basketball out on the court and say, here, go have fun. I mean huge buildings stocked by professional personnel where they can have little music groups, they could have sports programs, they could have art programs. And the purpose of that being that when they're young, to have instilled in them uh, a meaningful existence that they can do something to be productive. They're so tight, you know, so many of them come out, by the time they're 14, they're beat down, the parents tell them they're no good, they ain't never gonna be nothing. They're out on the corner selling drugs, they're fighting with people. If the greatest country on earth had the money to spend on us rather than these other ventures such as Iraq and rebuilding Iraq, amen. I mean, we're Americans, God, God bless it. Spend it on the kids when they're young. I'm thinking that's the way to stem the tide that keeps going in there. Let them learn when they're small that they can do stuff productive, that they could succeed.